Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at the Asilai W12. It's a very interesting looking fan. Let's get right into what makes this fan special. And that's this W frame shape. Um, fundamentally, it's not going to be that great on a CPU air cooler because it can't create a concert airflow. But let's check out the specs and find out how it did in my overall testing analysis. So the fan is RGB, it's a standard 112 millimeter class fan, 700 to 1800 RPM, which is a pretty good RPM range, 61.38 CFM, sorry that should not say pressure, it just should say, should just say CFM, 1.65 millimeters of H2O, so that is a very low number, but it's surprisingly high considering the design of this fan. It's got a dual ball bearing and a six year warranty, as I could find it on the specs. So first up is my case simulation test. First and foremost, this test is most important for you in what size computer case do you actually plan on installing this fan. For small cases or short throw distances, the six, like a blowing from the bottom of your case up towards your GPU, the 6 inch mark is the mark you want to take a look at. This assumes a front to back airflow style case and it would be equivalent to holding 120 millimeter class fan in that length. So we'd be looking at these data points. Then we have the 9 inch mark. The 9 inch mark is represented by your compact towers. Think of a case being able to hold 220 millimeter class fans on the bottom. Um, the case would be approximately the length of being able to hold a full ATX motherboard lengthwise in it and a GPU of equivalent length, but not much beyond that. And then we have the 11 inch mark. That would be your standard mid towers. It would be able to hold 240s or, 100, or 320 millimeter class fans in terms of the length of that case. So we'd be looking at those data points. And then we have the 14.5 inch mark. These would be your truly large cases, something like the Fox Design Torrent, and you'd be able to fit at least 340 millimeter class fans in the length of that case. Now, how do these data points compare? Well, we need to compare it to something, and that's where my control fan comes in. It is based three parts A12, A5 to one part A14 to create a composite 100 in 30 millimeter class fan by combining the two uh, data sets together in that fashion. So we have the control fan way up there, and the farther a fan is away from it downward, the worse the fan is. And we can see that the W12 Pro is hilariously bad. So we're going to just keep moving at 100% PWM fan signaling. We can compare their noise levels. The W12 is almost twice as loud. Every 10 decibels, so that's what this data point is, 29 versus 21. Uh, every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. So the Warrior W12 is significantly worse, and it's not even moving nearly as much air. So how does it compare against other fans? Well, I have some very good fans listed up there, like the P12, the Wonder Snails, this yellow line, the Tough Fan 12 is in there, Master Fan SF120M, and then one of my baseline bad fans is the Storm 120. It's just not a good fan for case airflow. And, and the W12 can't even compete at the 6s mark. It is significantly worse. And any airspeed that is under 0.5 meters per second, I call uh, unreliable. It's just the, uh, the accuracy of my current anemometer doesn't quite get me there yet. And that is one of the aspects of future growth for this channel that I'd like to improve upon is a better anemometer. And we see by the 14 point inch mark, the fan is basically useless. How about at 100% PWM fan signaling? Um, well, it gained a little bit of airspeed, but I'm, again, it's below that 0.5 meter per second, so it's a very unreliable. It means that the anemometer could have just picked up a little bit of airspeed and start to move, and so I picked up that data point when it uh, took that recording. But effectively, the fan is just useless at that airspeed at 100% PWM fan signaling. How is its noise versus airspeed? So airspeed is vertical, noise is horizontal. And we do see that the W12 is among the worst fans in this graph. It just is very noisy for how much air is actually moving. So you are buying this fan purely for the aesthetic. 100%. Seventy percent.
Right now the fountain is at 20% and I want you to try to hear the sound. I'm going to move the microphone pretty close and you'll hear a sort of um, rattle hissing type sound. I hope that you heard that and it comes from actually the blade itself not being particularly well centered. You can see the center ring just kind of bouncing there and that metal piece or the piece in the middle, the sticker, is actually pretty well centered. So that's actually just the hub vibrating around. Next, we're taking a look at how this fan does to my CPU air cooler, which we're not expecting much. And first is RPM versus airspeed. And you know, it actually did surprisingly well versus its RPMs. It's performing right in line with the control fan. So the fact that it's missing a whole part of the frame for an air cooler, it's doing pretty okay. Now, um, I need to specify this. This is an air cooler, the Noctua U12A. It is a little bit higher fin density, but I imagine the more dense the fins are, so once you're looking at radiators, it's really going to get dram dramatically worse very, very quickly. Unfortunately, again, I haven't acquired a radiator yet to do my testing. It is another future growth for this channel that I would like to achieve, and all that is possible with help of viewers like you right now. By hitting that subscribe button, joining me on Patreon, or becoming a YouTube member. Um, hopefully at some point I can get a small sponsorship for mainly instrumentation so that I can afford to buy the better instruments to really improve my data set to a lot better, like the next level is what I call it, as well as creating a noise chamber. Uh, the next set of data, we have the noise versus airspeed, and this is where we see the Warrior really fall apart, the W12. It's just significantly noisier. Let's keep moving. How does it compare? Noise normalized results? Well, it's not dead last. But it's pretty bad. So pretty much any fan you buy is going to outperform this fan. Noise normalized testing. How about if we take a look at it at 100% PDOM fan signaling? Once again, it is right down there towards the bottom. Mind, pretty interesting results. It is outperforming the TLG-12, but um, it's 10 decibels louder than it and 400 RPM higher. So once again, this fan is just proving that it's pretty incapable as, as this air cooler functionality. You would buy it because you liked its style, the way uh, its physical appearance. Noise results, I did a smaller subsample collection of the fans and you can see it doesn't really gain much airspeed for significantly more noise and I must have hit a harmonic at these other upper rpms that's 100 90 80 70 so I'm 70 percent to 80 percent uh hit our harmonic as a note with the warrior fan or the w12 they do feel air coming off the top so it's uh, not really great at concentrating air, which is no surprise. It's missing half the frame. All right, let's do the open box experience for the WTF, I mean the W12. So right away, I want to talk about some problems I have with it. Look, this sticker is completely not even in the right place. You can see, look, look, you can see it's actually supposed to be off to the side. The paint and the lettering here, is completely scuffed and smudged and it just came that way um, on this side I spin the fan and you can see that sticker wobbling if you're looking at the fan blade itself it's not really wobbling it's not plugged in don't like the paint job isn't even that good on this fan uh, I don't know I guess I just would expect better so this Oh, that's just held on with sticky tape. Whoops. Let's just stick it back on. So it does have rubber pads. Um, yeah, let's talk about the fan. So I was disappointed with this performance, and obviously I was going to be disappointed with its performance. This is an aesthetics-first performance 
after everything else. So missing this whole top of the frame means that in pretty much every testing that had any amount of pressure, so back pressure on it, heat sink, radiator, even my CFM test, which creates a small amount of back pressure, air was coming out the top. And it was limiting its maximum uh, airspeed performance that it could just push through something because it's just all going off to nowhere. Um, if you're going to use it as a case fan, it'll do just fine, probably. But well, let's just look at the frame. There's, there's so many things annoying about this design. These struts are so thick. They're, they're blocking a huge percentage of the airflow. And then the front of these struts right here, they are covering up the fan blades themselves as well. So you're, you're blocking up how much, how much of this fan blade is this? I don't know, an eighth, a sixth of the total surface area of the fan. And this is a pull configuration fan. So this is, this is the side you're going to look at inside the case. This, is, this would be facing the outside of the case. Um, so you're, you're blocking too much material. This needs to be skinnier and thinner. And then these frame over here is blocking the tip, which is where you get the most performance out of your fan. So poor, poor design choice here overall. We flip it around, and this is what the inside of the fan looks like. So it would be blowing air towards the camera now. And I don't know. It's fine. It's basically unobstructed. It's, it's good enough. Okay, here's the RGB appearance for the W12. Um, one quick note. So I don't know how well you can see into the back of my case here. But the RGB cable right here is a bit on the short side based on like this extender. Now like the cable length is actually kind of just fine. But where it separates, they're pretty short. So actually it's kind of tight getting it in there. At least my opinion compared to other ones I plugged in. Um, the RGB appearance, we just got it in color cycling. So you can't see any of the RGB lights from uh, this front perspective. So uh, I am running it at 20% PW fan signal, so I'm not too concerned about it whacking my fingers and doing a lot of damage. But just as a note, be careful. So this is what I was talking about. It's just a little bit on the tight side where I can't. And this is what the inside looks like. So I'm going to change the focus so that it's focused in on the fan itself. And let's put it onto a cell of color and see if we can see the number of LED lights in it. The last test is CFM testing. It is my least favorite test, mainly because it doesn't tell you a lot of information. A CFM test, you're blowing air down a tube, so it doesn't tell you how good this fan is in a case. And it doesn't tell you how good the fan is going to be on a radiator, AAO, or a cooler. It tells you how good the fan is at blowing air down a tube. So that's why I don't really like the test. And we can see that the fan is pitiful. It doesn't even compete. And if we take a look at it in noise results, it's, yeah, let's just move on. Next to dead last, the scythe fans tend to do really bad in this test. And it <laughs> it makes those fans look good. At 100%, well, down at the bottom, let's keep moving. CFM versus decibels. Decibels are horizontal. CFM is vertical. And it's terrible. Let's just move on. So the W12 at time of I purchased it is a $26 fan, which is pretty unforgivable considering a lot of the sacrifices you make with it. You, its RGB isn't spectacular. The the stickers in the on the fan weren't even centered. I got a lot of motor hum, just a lot of flaws with this fan. So um, the fact of its poor performance overall isn't isn't even overwritten by quality of the device. It's appears to be relatively low quality despite this, this the solid frame the frame itself was actually pretty well made just the things attached inside the fan were very poorly made and then it doesn't perform so there's more to this score than what we see and it is among the worst fans i've tested in terms of the value so i'm going to move through this relatively quickly at the 11 inch mark it's got no value it's at basically zero CFM testing, very, very low. Uh, through a CPU or cooler, below average. This is the raw data for the W12 Pro. So 
Um, what's there to say about this fan? I thought it looked really cool. I wasn't expecting much from it, but I did expect at least more quality in terms of like lining those stickers, making sure the RGB looked good. Um, like the, the nuance things that Lee and Lee is doing a lot with a lot of their fans, where their fans tend to lack a little bit in performance, but they make up a foreign style. This fan, apparently I read through a bunch of reviews online. It's like, if you can get a good one, they're very good. But if you can't, they're terrible. And that appears to be the case. I didn't get a good sample. And this fan wouldn't get my recommendation at all. I would recommend avoiding it like the Black Plague and uh, just move on. But if this fan style suits whatever style you like, I mean, that that's the way you spend your money and that's perfectly fine that's perfectly valid you don't need to justify it towards me uh, i'm just here to present the data but in this one i developed a very strong opinion but anyways um thank you very much for watching if you like what i'm doing uh please think about joining me as a subscriber and think about joining me on patreon and becoming a youtube member that really goes a long way in making this channel possible right now uh all this is just out of my dime my time and all that and i'd like to make this channel a little bit more serious i'm not looking to become like super high end i just would like it to break even uh anyways if you got suggestions for more fans for me to take a look at please leave them in the comment section down below if you got ideas on ways i can improve my videos obviously i talked about some of the things that are changing that i haven't updated in this uh older slideshow um so do note that but anything else in the way I'm formatting it, please go ahead and leave it down below. I'm here for the tough love and want to make these fan videos as enjoyable as possible. Anyways, thank you very much for watching Computer Tech and More. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.